Good news everyone, I've got a new toy to play with. Here are my first impressions of the Motorola Droid Turbo. Uh, we'll start with the physical aspects of it because they are pretty simple. It's kind of a slab, kind of your typical slab of a smartphone, uh, which isn't really a bad thing, it's, at least it's like consistent. Um, I opted for the normal typical black Kevlar version. Um, there's your uh, 21 megapixel camera on the back with two LED flashes. Sadly, no Motorola dimple, just some weird texturized Motorola logo. Really sad. Big old Droid and Verizon branding down here. On the sides, you have a power, power button and volume rocker, and this volume button can be um, removed, and this is your SIM card tray. Um, up top, we have your headphone jack, and that's kind of about it. It's, it's, it's basically a slab, other than this massive part, which is a screen, which we can talk about next. The screen is really one of the highlights of this phone. This is a 5.2 inch 2560 by 1440p screen, AMOLED. Um, that's kind of crazy. That's um, that's a huge resolu resolution for such a small device. Like I can fit this in my hand, and this has a higher resolution than my computer monitor, my TV, anything. It's it's insane. Um, it's it's really cool to think about. Like um, <laughs> we have like this kind of technology now in our in our pocket, like a screen like this. But anyway, um, a screen is really nice. It's it's incredibly crisp. You you'll never see a pixel in your life. Um, it's, um, it's decently bright outdoors, um, in the sunlight, it's, it's just barely passable, but it's, I think it's better than what I've seen. Um, I wish the screen could get a little dimmer. It's, um, like, when using your phone, like, right before bed, even though you shouldn't, um, using your phone in bed at night, um, I wish it could get a little darker, but I guess I found an app to kind of go around that. Um, on the screen, you also notice that we don't have, um, software buttons, we have capacitive buttons. And I like software buttons more. Um, especially with like lollipop, how they're gonna change those, but it's um it's it's all right. I mean I've I've adjusted nicely enough. <clears throat> um, we can go into the uh, software next. And speaking of lollipop, that's the biggest thing that comes to mind on this phone for software is there's no lollipop yet. And this phone was released in November, and that it's I want to say it's inexcusable, but I mean what what's that gonna that's not gonna help anyone. It's it's horrible that it doesn't have lollipop. I'm on KitKat still. Um, it's it has been promised apparently that it will come out mid June for this phone. So once it comes out, I will update you on what's new with it. But that's really a really sad thing to report that there's still no lollipop on you know something that's supposed to be a new device. Um, this is like a bleeding edge device. It's got a 2560 by 1440p screen. It's got a Snapdragon 805, three gigabytes of RAM and you know, like a huge, um, also a huge 3,900 milliamp hour battery, and then it's kind of crippled by the fact that it doesn't have lollipop. It's um, it's extremely responsive. It performs really well for you know having a Snapdragon 805, three gigs of RAM. I, that's a part. It performs well. It's just it's sad not to have like the latest and greatest of Android. Um, but performance is really well. I haven't noticed any lag. I know some people might be a little concerned with um, pushing that many pixels around. Um, I was a little too, but Honestly, I think everything works fine. It's, um, I think it would be even more, like, responsive if it had lollipop, but we'll just have to wait and see how that goes. <laughs> um, um, and otherwise, for, um, software, we have our typical suite of Motorola goodies bundled in this here at Moto app. Um, and this is all, I mean, if you know anything about me, I love these, this, uh, Motorola software. We have some assist stuff to do some automation, like when you're driving or when you're sleeping, it can silence your phone. The actions, um, we have um, a couple sensors built in here, so when you wave your hand over the phone, your um, moto display is going to be activated, and any notifications you have are going to appear on the screen. And that's really cool. It's, I mean, it, it seems kind of gimmicky, but I use it all the time. Just, oh, I'm just going to wave my hand. Yeah, nothing, nothing going on today, whatever. It's really cool. Um, and this moto display is like, the best thing, I swear. Um, it only activates the pixels that it uses right here, and you can just swipe down and activate it or go right into a notification. And you have the, um, you still have your mode of voice, which is, honestly, I don't use it too much, but sometimes I do, mostly for like, I find, I think I use it the most when I'm doing laundry and setting timers and stuff. Um, you can set a personal passphrase for this, so I have mine set to, okay computer, what's up? Nothing. Hello, Kevin. 
Yeah, I'm, I've become a bit of a bum since college. <laughs> um, but otherwise, we have a really stock Android here, which is one thing I really love. Um, not a lot of bloatware. You have some typical Verizon stuff, but it's nothing too bad. And like I said, that Motorola software is really nice. Um, so another thing I wanted to mention in this hands-on video was this speaker, because that was something I was curious about. This has a front-facing speaker, and if you can kind of tell, I do have a screen protector on here, don't get confused by that. But this part up here, this looks like a huge speaker grill. And that's what I thought at first too, but it's not. <laughs> um, it's really hard to show in this light, but you can see um, there's kind of two indents here on the speaker grill, or what's supposed to be the speaker grill. And these little two indents are your two speakers. You have two front-facing speakers. This one on the left is for media, and this one on the right is for phone calls. And that's kind of... I've, I've been kind of annoyed by that. Um, I mean, it is a front-facing speaker, so when you're playing media, it's already, like, three times better than any back-facing speaker. That's all right, and it gets, you know, decently loud. It's, it's really good for media consumption. I mean, obviously nothing like HTC One, but whatever. Um, it kind of sucks, though, that... Um, it's separated into two. I wish the right one, the right one is for your, for your phone, actually taking phone calls. And it's not all that loud. First of all, it's not all that loud. And second, it's off, it's off center. So typically when I hold my phone up, my ear is going to be like right around the camera and it's not. And I noticed like at first that, oh, these calls are really kind of quiet. What's going on? And I shifted it a bit and like to get the speaker firing in my ear. Oh, well, that's why. <laughs> so that's that kind of irks me. Um, but I guess what are you going to do? It's it's still nice that it's a front-facing speaker, so I just wish they might have done something like a little bit of a Moto X style with one over here, one down here, and then kept software buttons. But whatever, it's, it's all right, I guess. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about in this hands-on was the battery life. Um, my battery life has been <laughs> nothing short of amazing. This phone has a... 3,900 million hour battery stuffed in this semi-decently tiny body. They did, it was, it's actually pretty impressive, like the size of the battery and how slim this phone is. Um, it's obviously a little bigger than like the Moto X that I was coming from, but I've adjusted nicely and like it, it works, which is amazing. This, the battery is like the selling point of this phone. It's incredible. Um, even with like this 2K display and this powerful processor, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> um, I've never been able to kill this in any day, like, no matter what I would be doing, unless I would pers purposely be, like, watching YouTube for 20 hours, which is impossible, but, um, I've never killed it. Um, on my longest days, like, some really crazy days, I've checked my screen on time at the end of the day, and it's been, like, five hours would be my longest day, and it's, and that's not even just, like, that would be including videos and stuff, because my tablet is, you know, dead, so I've been using this for YouTube videos and stuff, and this is, it's such a trooper, and it's great. Um, the battery life is, like, the selling point of this video. If, I can easily, like, say and recommend this phone now, if you need something, if you're not, like, at your desk all day, or if you don't want to charge your phone, like, all the time, this is, like, the phone to get. It's, the battery life has, like, changed how I use my phone, and that's, that's fantastic. I love it. Um, if, if you're like kind of like a road warrior like that, if you're looking for something with a good battery life, this is a phone to seriously consider, and I would already recommend it based off of that. Um, but there you go, that's my quickish hands-on of the Motorola Droid Turbo. If you have um, any questions that you want to see in like a full review, let me know. Um, I can address those. I have I have a list started of things that I need to talk about. There's kind of a few interesting caveats to having this phone, and I really, really hope that Lollipop comes out, like, soon. Like, today would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, but thanks for watching, guys. Um, leave your comments, or leave your questions in a comment below, and I'll address those in a review. See ya.